Hey, boxing fans, I'm Smitty. Welcome to InThisCornerTV.com. We're with Keith Kaiser. He's, of course, the executive director for the Nevada State Athletic Commission. We're here to talk about the obvious, the controversy going on right now with Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, their fight in jeopardy. Where are we at with this, Keith? Well, first off, about a week ago, we received a request from Golden Boy asking for the date of March 13th at the MGM Grand. Uh, later that same day, that's when the news had broke about the parties trying to reach some sort of agreement on additional drug testing. They, neither side has asked us for any additional drug testing. They're, they're doing private negotiations for that, as they did with the purse amount, they did with the, the weight, the gloves, things like that as well. Uh, however, the commission on its own, through its chairman, has ordered both fighters to do out-of-competition drug tests this week. This is something the commission's been doing for about almost two years now. And the uh, the fighters have uh, this week to go in. They're going to uh, give the urine samples, and that will be tested for the out-of-competition prohibited substances as declared by WADA. Floyd, of course, wanted this Olympic-style testing. What are the primary differences between what he is looking for to happen and what you guys do right now? I don't think there's any differences, or at least nothing significant, with respect to the urine testing. The, the, the labs that we use, they use the WADA protocols. They use the WADA prohibited substance list as the USADA. So I don't think there's any differences there. My understanding what the blood testing is, the only real difference there comes with the EPO testing, which is a, is a prohibitive substance. Um, but even then, I think that may be a long-term blood test, is my understanding from talking to some experts. So that's probably the one big difference, uh, is my understanding. Um, but as far as the steroids go and the other prohibitive substances go outside of EPO, the, the difference is negligible. As we've heard it, and you know it, is the situation or has the situation been that Pacquiao is concerned about the uh, the randomness of the test and he doesn't want to have his blood taken too close to the fight because he has said that apparently that weakens him? Is is that apparently the, the problem right now? With I don't know why both sides have the positions they have. I can tell you there are, there are risks involved with blood testing that you don't have with urine testing. Obviously, it's a much more evasive test. Even when they give blood to us for the HIV and the hepatitis results, they do that in a sterile environment. They give blood in a hospital or in a doctor's office or a laboratory, something along those lines. We never want to take blood in a, in a, in a dressing room before or after the fight. For, for uh, Again, for it's not a sterile environment. You also have chances that you could nick a vein, you could cause some bruising or something like that. So uh, yet more reasons why we do the urine testing and not the, not the blood testing. However, again, that doesn't mean that there's – not some sort of benefit from blood testing, and it seems like both parties are agreeable to do blood testing uh, in addition to the urine testing by the commission. They're just not agreeable on when uh, to have those tests done or how many of those tests to have, and that's something that they have to decide and, and work out between them. Are you surprised that this snag even came up? I mean, when you heard, what would be Floyd's motivation to even start this, in your opinion? I, I don't know. The Again, I, I give a lot of credit to both camps that they were able to reach agreements on the purse, on the weight, on the weight penalty, on, on the, on the uh, gloves, uh, apparently on the side of the fight as well, coming to Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. So they, they, I think they've come a long way. I think a lot of people didn't expect them to get that far. As far as where they're going to end up on the uh, blood testing issue, if anywhere, it is up for them to decide. And... Y- there is no reason to question anything about Manny Pacquiao. There's never been a suspicion uh, of Manny Pacquiao using any performance-enhancing drugs, right? None for either guy. Both gentlemen have been successful moving up in weight over the years. They've passed every single test we've given them. Um, I have great respect for both fighters. Uh, but you know, that being said, if fighters want to do additional testing, they're, they're free to do that if they reach agreement on it, just like fighters can do additional medical testing if they want to do that as well. But as far as both these gentlemen go, they've been very professional, uh, very clean athletes when it comes to drug testing in the state of Nevada, and as my understanding, elsewhere as well. Would Olympic-style testing, uh, you know, differ, different from what you have right now? Is that something that you folks here would ever consider, or are you happy with the what you have in effect right now? Well, we're happy with what we have now. Or we, we change it, but we have changed it over the years. We didn't test for steroids before 2001, 2002, right around that period of time. And we're able to add that to, to our tests. We've also expanded our, the tests we do for stimulants over the years. So we do have changed it. But, but basically what we do is we rely on the experts, as do, as do the IOC or the USADA. Uh, excuse me, the USOC does as well with the USADA and the IOC through, the, uh, through WADA. So, 
again, the labs we use, the, the protocols we have follow the WADA list. In fact, our, in our regulation, we have in, adopted and incorporated the WADA list of prohibited substances. So whenever they add something to their list of prohibited substances, it's automatically added to our list. So there, there is no, again, no significant or, or uh, important difference between how they test the urine in the Olympics and, and how we test the urine. And for, for the drugs that we're, we, uh, we deal with, be it steroids or be it drugs of abuse or be it stimulants, the urine tests are there, and we've caught people using it, and we're very confident in those tests. Uh, my understanding is the HGH that people are concerned about, that the, 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 there is a urine test out there and there is a blood test out there for that, but the experts disagree on whether either one is very helpful or very uh, uh useful for, for the experts in the field, So, I, but I'm sure that the laboratories and the experts are continuing to work there on. So I think drug testing has come a long way in the last 10 years, and they'll continue to go further and further, and hopefully will lead to less athletes using prohibited substances. That, that ultimately is our goal, is, is not to catch people using drugs, it's to stop people from using drugs in the first place, and hopefully that has occurred over the last 10 years. Since you, you guys have implemented it, uh, have you has there been what you would consider a problem? Uh, have many fighters tested positive? You know, a lot of fighters have tested positive, though overall it's been a very low percentage, and, and I'm hopeful that the drug testing does do its deterrent uh, effect that we, we hope it does. You, you, you know, you trust these guys, but you have to verify as well. These, that's why we do the testing, and we're hoping they come back clean, and most of the time they do come back clean. However, when they don't, we, we issue a complaint, and we, we go to disciplinary action against those fighters. But I think the, the fact of, of the, the education that's out there now, congressional hearings they've had on these things, uh, just the fact that I think fighters now can be more uh, at ease, that their opponent isn't trying to get an unfair advantage against them, all that I think leads to a deterrent effect, and, and you see less and less drug use than you would have, say, five or ten years ago. However, that doesn't mean it's all gone, and, and that's why we have to stay vigilant, and, and we have. On that same sub subject, how, how does that uh, compare with the UFC and, and the testing of, of those guys? You know, we've had we've had kickboxers, we've had mixed martial arts, and we had boxers all fail tests. But but the vast majority, the overwhelming majority in all the sports, they pass. And so I think uh, that 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 bodes very well for the athletes involved as well as for the commissions involved. And hopefully that number will just keep getting lower and lower as the years go by. That's what it seems to, seem to have has done. So there's no real set pattern there with respect to the different sports. Uh, like I said, there's been positive tests and negative tests for all the sports. Keith, is your office, uh, have, have you been in touch with uh, Team Mayweather, Team Pacquiao, and the promoters? And uh, has there been a lot of back and forth going on the last few days? Yeah, I've, I've talked to the several. I talked to El Heyman and Leonard Elby through the Mayweather camp. I've talked to Aram and, and, and Todd DeBuff and Freddie Roach on, on, the May, on the Pacquiao side of things. And it seems like they're all still hopeful that so they can reach some sort of agreement on this last issue and have the fight. I think both fighters want the fight to happen, but there is this last disagreement that needs to be solved. So I think they're doing everything they can. Do you think it'll get solved? Uh, I don't know. I hope it gets solved because I think this is a fight that both fighters want to happen and that the fans want to happen. So it's a good thing for them as well as for the fans, as well as for the state of Nevada, as well as for boxing as a whole. So I hope it happens. Uh, again, though, to get this far, I think a lot of people two months ago would, would have said we'll, we'll never get close to getting this thing signed. And they, they got very, very close, and hopefully they'll get over that last hurdle. Well, to uh, Manny Pacquiao and to uh, Floyd Mayweather, with uh, all the uh, boxing fans, the millions of boxing fans here, of course, uh, in America and in the Philippines and around the world that want this fight to happen. There's also, guys, about 35 million other reasons for you guys to make this fight happen. So shut up and fight before one final thing, looking into the uh, the new year, uh, 2010. Any uh, new things we could see with the Nevada State Athletic Commission as far as boxing goes? Well, it looks like we're going to have some good fights. We're starting out of the box with a, a big uh, mosley Berto fight at the Mandalay Bay at the end of the month, at the end of January. So that's a, a great way to start off the uh, pay-per-view year in, in Nevada. And I think we'll just continue to see. I, I think regardless of whether this fight is made, we'll see a big fight in, in March. We'll be a, see a big fight as always in May. So I think it'll be a good uh, first uh, half of the year for Nevada. A lot of other cards going on as well, smaller cards, but just as important cards going on in Nevada as well. So I think we'll just continue to do what we've been doing the last 10 years or so, if not more, and that is have high-quality fights, be it big venues or small venues, for the, for the fans and for the fighters. All right, uh, Keith Kaiser, the executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. For InThisCornerTV.com, I'm Smitty.